Hello everyone, and welcome to another one of these, I guess. A lot of you really like the last one, and well, I don't really make these sorts of videos unless I feel like there's something to talk about here. And from what you can tell in the title below, has Mortal Kombat 1 finally redeemed itself? As general morale has changed about the game recently, but what of course has led to it, and is it true? Now of course, one thing I want to note before we jump right into things, is that this isn't going to be one of those sorts of videos where I'm dunking or taking pot shots at Neverrealm. If anything, I find these videos pretty good to open up a discussion and dialogue, to talk about what's working with the game right now and what completely isn't. I think documenting it and talking about it on a large platform allows for a wider range of voices as well as really good and helpful ways to improve the game. So consider this a healthy conversation about Mortal Kombat 1 and where it is right now. Because to me, I can only describe my relationship with this game as a bit of a monkey's paw. And we are going to see why, but let's jump right into things. So first and foremost, let's talk about probably the most controversial part of the game right now. And that is of course, the in-game store. Now if there's one thing you need to know about me, I don't mind in-game stores, at least for free-to-play and indie titles, as it is usually the best way of directly supporting the developers. For AAA games though, at full price, that is something I'm fully against, as I do find it very predatory, and no one should have to pay more money on top of an already very expensive product. Mortal Kombat 1 is unfortunately one of those games that have fallen into this trap gating out a bunch of skins and cosmetics instead of its traditional in-game unlock system. With its fan-beloved crypt system having been replaced by the ever-controversial Invasions mode, which is probably another reason why people lament it, the skins within the in-game store are store-exclusive, meaning that you can't obtain them by other means. So with that in mind, what's happened to the store now to frame it in a better light, so to say. Well, the prices have in fact gone down, quite substantially actually, as the skins that were originally priced at 800 to 1000 crystals have now been bumped to about 500. A significant and positive change moving forward, as 100 crystals roughly translates to $1. I would say this is a general step in the right direction, but there's still the elephant in the room that there isn't an additional mode to earn dragon crystals, nor is there an alternative way to actually earn these skins. Along with that, and something I really do hope does change, is that these premium skins are only available for a limited time. As once they're gone, they're gone right now. There has been no official word on the store rotation. So from what you can tell, the communication we talked about previously still isn't quite there. Now, touching on these skins, I do want to say these are really fucking cool. Like, look at Xiao here. He looks amazing and I love him under the Khan title. It's easily my favorite skin here. I think the skins that they've put in the game look fantastic. Like, I really like them. As for their accuracy, however, that's an entirely different conversation. One that I honestly think deserves an entire video in itself. Because again, whilst I'm very happy with these skins and I think they look amazing, NRS hasn't quite done these legacy skins justice like they had with Shredder Sub-Zero and MK9 Scorpion. But anyway, back on the topic of the store. I do generally think this is a step in the right direction, but we do desperately need an alternative option here. Especially five seasons deep, and I'm not spending any more money on this game unless it's an expansion. So unfortunately for me, I'm gonna have to stick by my guns, grind my characters, and pray that they eventually release something or put it in the shrine. Now shuffling along, let's talk about what's really gotten better. The gameplay, and I don't mean just from like a patch notes perspective. In terms of gameplay, things do look to be generally improving, as they're now adding more moves to characters, giving characters more utility and depth to their gameplay. And whilst it seems surface level, for a fighting game, this is a really big thing. Adding new strings and special moves really do help freshen up a formula that may have felt dry. 
I know they've been doing it for a while now with characters like Darius, but this feels like the most significant patch that has added it. So I'm glad they've done this and hope that they continue to do it moving forward. I do have a sneaking suspicion that invasions might be a bit of a testing ground for this, as they could add all of those new moves in like the year 2 edition of the game. Whilst it hasn't officially been announced, it's pretty damn obvious we're gonna get a second year's worth of DLC. It'd be a waste to just leave it as an evasion exclusive asset. Overall, I think this is really really good for the health of the game. Of course, we can't really talk about gameplay without talking about Ermac here. And as the newest release of the combat pack, I think he's really fun. I think he's a great addition, and I'm glad he's here. Truth be told, I think Neverrealm are knocking it out of the park with DLC, especially on the cameo side of things. They're doing a really good job there. Oh, one thing I did want to touch on, and I've been seeing a lot of people say it, Oh, Omax saved the game. Truth be told, not a single DLC character is gonna save this game. It'll help bump the numbers for sure, but that's not sustainability. It's about the depth, variety, and contents of said fighting game that really gives it that replay value. I think Neverrealm have finally understood this by giving characters more moves, and of course, expand on the assets they already have. Now we must talk on a rather delicate thing that's kind of plagued the game since release, especially for modern day gaming, and that is crossplay and online sustainability. So first off, let's talk about the online, as that's kind of been the monkey paw I've been talking about. As every time we've had a new exciting character, the hand decides to curl a finger in the form of the netcode. It happened with Quan Chi, with server disconnects running rampant, and then when Peacemaker released, it then started to suffer from in-game frame drops. With that said, the release of Ermac had me rather worried. If history was anything to go by, right? But I think they finally picked up on this with Season 5, as it released on time, mind you, and all of those connection issues which plagued us have now been stabilized, and along with this, they finally implemented Crossplay King of the Hills. That is fantastic, especially for those that host tournaments. The only things we're lacking now is lobbies and online practice, but again, it looks like we're going a step in the right direction. Finally, let's touch on everyone's favorite game mode here, Invasions, and uh, this season is... Uh, something. I do think that the general quality of life stuff in Invasions has gotten better, but what's that? The monkey paw, it, it, it's curling. Ah, yes, that's because this game mode is grindy as hell. And whilst it definitely has improved in some areas, it has got substantially worse in others. I think the addition of the mixed mesh fighters is a really fun idea. They are quite fun inclusions, but only ever surface during secret fights, and ambushes where the level is kind of whack. Along with this, they are more frequent and naturally more irritating to deal with. It feels like we've reverted back to like season one levels of frequency here. On the bright side, they've added new mini games, but it's, ah, oh, the hands, it's, it's curling again. Why is it curling again? They are brutal, frustrating, with little to no room for error. Slapping you with a redo button for the smallest mistake, and of course, then you gotta redo it and try to run out the timer. Here's the thing, I'm glad Invasions is getting variety. That is what that mode needs. But this wasn't the variety I was talking about. I'm about four maces in, and I can't lie, this is probably the least fun I've had with that mode so far. Whether or not you like Invasions, that is entirely up to you. The thing is, if you hate the formula, I don't think you'll enjoy this season. It's a lot of grinding, and whilst again, I do praise it for adding variety, what they've added here just simply isn't something I'd associate with fun. On paper, it probably sounded great, but the room for error is a joke here. And for God's sake, please turn down the damage of projectiles here. It is ridiculous. So, with all of that said, has Mortal Kombat 1 finally been redeemed? Well, I don't know. And I don't mean to, like, say that in a negative way. I feel like we're 1 million percent on the right path. And the game has vastly improved since release. But I can't help but get that itching feeling that Mortal Kombat 1 is now finally in the place it was advertised as. The morale for this game is at an all-time high, 
because I think the game we have now is what the game should have been on release. And remember what I said in my previous video about AAA games and how unbelievably dependent they are on patches in order to sustain its lifespan. I think this right here, right now, is the same exact issue. Whilst I'm pretty confident in saying I'm happy in the direction it's going, the fact that it's taken five seasons to get where we are now may be something that tarnishes this game's legacy moving forward. Generally though, I think that Mortal Kombat 1 is heading down the path it needs to. Because if anything, I think that we just want this game to become a lot better than what it already is. And I think this can be achieved by adding more game modes, more variety, more moves and more depth. What Neverrealm really do from this point onwards will ultimately be what distinguishes Mortal Kombat 1 from the rest of its games. Because to me, the core of this game is very, very good. It's just everything around it that's the issue here. So now, of course, I do relay this question to all of you. What are your thoughts on the game's current status? Do you like the direction it's going in? What would you like to see them do or implement? Please do comment down below, as I'd love to hear what you have to say. For the first time in a while, it actually feels kind of good to be a Mortal Kombat fan.